Okay, hello everyone. A very warm welcome to our MA Fine Arts Sculpture virtual event today. Uh, I'm just going to give it a few moments just to allow people to come in from the waiting room and then we'll get started with some quick introductions and how the session is going to work today. Okay, so first of all, just to introduce myself, my name's Hannah. I'm the Student Recruitment and Marketing Manager at Camberwell College of Arts. And today I'm joined by the pathway leader, Matthew, and also one of our current students, Owen. And between the three of us today, we're gonna to take you through an introduction to what it's like to study at Camberwell, a little bit about the application process, and then an insight into the course itself. Now, before I start with the presentations, I just want to let you know how the session works. So all of your microphones are muted throughout the presentations and your webcams are not visible to us or anyone else in the audience. So you remain anonymous throughout. Um, we will be answering any questions that you have, but what we'll do is we'll take those at the very end of the session. But please do feel free to add your questions to the Q&A box as we're going through today. Now you should be able to see that Q&A box on the menu bar. Uh, so just type those in there and they'll come through to us and we'll pick them up at the end. I will also be sending you a, a follow-up email after the event, and that will include a link to a recording of today's session, but also any of the kind of resources, things that we've signposted in the presentations, I can link to those in that email. So you'll have everything in one place for your reference. Okay, so shall I kick off with a little bit about Camberwell and what it's like to study with us? Okay, so Camberwell College of Arts. Uh, Camberwell is part of the University of the Arts London, so UAL, and UAL is made up of six colleges. Now, each of our six colleges has a different specialism or a different approach to their subject. Once again this year, UAL has been ranked second in the world in the QS World Rankings for Art and Design subject area. But Camberwell itself is a really unique place to study. And Camberwell has a really long and rich history. Uh, we've recently celebrated being 125 years old and it was purpose built to be an art and design school. And if you visit us or you end up coming to study with us, you'll see that history reflected in the architecture of the building from the old Victorian building, which is the original art school through to the brand new buildings that we've had added in the last few years. But Camberwell's ethos is very much about rethinking current practices and also cultivating new. And we try to embrace both traditional craftsmanship and new digital technology. The important thing to us is that our students find their own path and they really have the freedom to explore their individuality in their practice whilst they're with us. In terms of our location, so we are based in South East London and we're at the heart of a creative community. We are surrounded by galleries, project spaces, studios, pop-ups. There's a real thriving local arts scene. And the college is very much part of that as well. Aside from that art scene, there's lots happening as well in both Peckham and Camberwell in terms of socialising, lots of great independent businesses, places to eat, drink, meet other students. And we're very lucky at Camberwell because we also have four halls of residence that are all within walking distance of the college. So the college has a campus feel to it. Uh, the closest halls of residence, which is pictured here, is called Gardens House. And that's literally a 30 second walk from the front door. And all of those halls are open to our postgraduate student community as well. Now, although that we're based in South East London, we have fantastic links into the city. So you can still take advantage of all of the amenities of central London as well. Now, aside from being part of the Camberwell community, we also have something called the Postgrad community, which runs across the university, so all six colleges. And the Postgrad community aims to help our postgraduate taught and our research students collaborate, network and create together. And they do that through a whole range of different events and activities. So some of the more recent things that have happened have been uh, curator-led tours of major exhibitions. We've done visits to artist studios and industry spaces, uh, sharing of research activity at the university, but also very much being student-led. So skills exchanges, knowledge exchanges, there's plenty of ways that you can network with the wider postgraduate community whilst you're with us. If you'd like to get to know a little bit more about the postgrad community, uh, they're on social at UALPG community, so Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, and you can give them a follow and have a look at some of their content there. Now, in terms of support services for our students, 
So at UAL, we have a whole host of student services available, and those are based both at Camberwell, so in the college, but also we have a central hub in High Holborn where students can attend these services as well. And our support services include our student advisory service, our academic support team, counselling, health advice, a multi-faith chaplaincy and also disability support service. Now, some of these advisory services you can access before you enrol with us. So if you are thinking about how you might finance your studies, you can speak to our financial advisors. Or if you're an international student and you need some advice around immigration, maybe you need visas to study. We do have immigration specialists who are able to support you with that process. We also have a fantastic careers and employability team who work across the university, but we have representatives for each of our colleges. And this team support our students and graduates with their personal professional development. So they run a programme of workshops, drop-ins, different clinics, supporting you um, with things like copywriting, how to make your own website, uh, self-promotion. So all the kind of fundamentals that you'll need to support your practice. But they also have a great mentoring scheme. They have some funding that you can apply for. So maybe if you have um, a project or an entrepreneurial idea that you need financial support with, they have funding you can apply to. And there's also lots of opportunities to showcase and exhibit your work through this team. So we do have a retail unit called Not Just a Shop, which is a physical shop at High Holborn, but also an online uh, retail space. And lots of our students apply to have their work uh, stocked and sold through that. It's also worth mentioning Arts Temps, which is our in-house temping agency. So the majority of our students will work alongside their study. And UAL Arts Temps is a way that students are able to find work within the university, which is flexible around their studies. So job opportunities with Arts Temps can include uh, things like supporting recruitment events, uh, might be supporting admin doing in-stores of exhibitions, event work, bar work, so a whole variety to suit different skill sets. And so lots of our students choose to do that whilst they study with us. Now, moving on to entry requirements for the course. So we are looking for a BA degree or an equivalent qualification, but what we're really looking for is evidence of your ability in your chosen subject area. And the way that you demonstrate that is through your personal statement and your digital portfolio of work as well. Now, we appreciate not everyone has come from a traditional uh, educational background. So if you have uh, alternative qualifications or different experiences that you feel would support your application, please do include those in your personal statement. And that will be considered as part of your application overall. Now, if English isn't your first language, you will need to provide evidence at enrolment of an English language qualification. So what that means is that you can apply without having completed this qualification. But when it comes to enrolment, that's the point where you will have had to have passed. For the MA course, we're looking for an IELTS 6.5 with 5.5 in each of those different skills. If you hold a different type of English language qualification, not an IELTS, it may meet the entry requirements and we are constantly updating the list of qualifications that meet the entry requirements on the English language page of our website. So please do check on there and there's a table where you can look at what course you're interested in and what qualifications are accepted. Now fees for next academic year. So the MA is 15 months full time. For home fee payers, the fee is 13,330. And if you're an EU or international fee payer, it's 28,570. It is possible to pay your tuition fees in instalments. So rather than paying it in one lump sum at the beginning of the course, once you enroll, you pay a fee upon enrollment and then the rest of the instalments are taken throughout the time that you're studying. Now, postgraduate funding opportunities. So if you've already studied with us before, if you are a UAL graduate, you are entitled to a 20% discount on your tuition fees. If you're a home fee payer, we do have 185 scholarships available and those are £7,000 each and those are taken off your tuition fees. Now, there are two routes uh, of application for the, that particular scholarship. One is means tested, so it's about your mean income and the other you apply directly. Now, when you make your application, uh, we will send you information about all the different postgraduate funding opportunities and the associated deadlines. So that will come through to you. If you're an international student, we also have 215 £7,000 fee waivers available. And we do have four £50,000 scholarships as well. 
Now, those £50,000 scholarships cover tuition fees, also include accommodation at one of our UL halls of residence, and you can use any uh, remaining of scholarship money towards your living costs whilst you're studying with us as well. You may also be eligible for a postgraduate master's loan. Now, applicants can apply for a loan of up to 12,167. It's very similar to an undergraduate student loan, so done through the student finance company. The key difference being that if you apply for the postgraduate master's loan, the money is paid to you and not the institution. So that means that you can manage that loan as you wish. You may want to use it towards tuition fees or you may want to split it between living costs, tuition fees, materials. You manage that loan as you wish. So it's paid directly to you. It comes in three installments. Once you've finished your course and you reach a certain earnings threshold, and that's when you start repaying the loan. If you have an undergraduate student loan, you will repay your postgrad and your undergrad loan at the same time. So bear that in mind. Now, there are eligibility and residency criteria that apply for the postgraduate master's loan. And um, one of the key ones being if you have already studied a master's or an equivalent qualification, even if you've self-funded it, you will not be eligible for this loan. So bear that in mind. Now, as you can imagine, the eligibility criteria, residency criteria for each of these is all slightly different. So I'd recommend having a look at our fees and funding calculator. It's a great tool on the website, funding pages, and you can enter in your courses of interest, your details, income, your personal situation, and it will then be able to tell you what a particular scholarships, bursary or loans you may be eligible for. So that's a great place to start when you're looking at funding your master's. Now the application process, so everything is done online. To apply, you need to go to the course page of the website and you'll see a tab that says apply now, and that will take you through to the UAL portal. Now the UAL portal is where everything to do with your application will happen. It's where you will upload your portfolio, your personal statement, you'll book your interview through there. So when you set up that account, please make sure you're using an email that you check regularly because notifications will come through when something changes on that account. Your personal statement, no more than 500 words. And really you should be telling us about why you're interested in the course, how you feel it can help you progress, your research intentions, and also detailing any relevant experience practice that will support your application. Once you've submitted that personal statement, you'll then be asked to upload a digital portfolio. Now your digital portfolio, we have lots of guidance available on the website and also on the course page, we list the criteria that is used to assess these portfolios. So it's worth looking at that before you pull your portfolio together. Alongside that digital portfolio, we ask you to do a two to three minute video task. Now this is really to get that help us get to know you a little bit better. So it's talking about um, your interest in the MA, your research intentions. And so between that portfolio, the video task and personal statement, we should get a really good sense of your practice and your research interests. You'll then be invited to a short interview, about 15, 20 minutes, all done online again, and you'll book your slot on the UAL portal. And then once all of those areas are completed, the outcome of your interview will be communicated via the UAL portal. Now, just a reminder of deadlines. So we do two rounds of application deadlines. The first one is coming up in December, so on Wednesday, the 13th of December. And then we also have a second round of applications and the deadline for that is Wednesday, the 3rd of April. Now, after the session today, if you want to find out more, there's still plenty of ways you can. As I mentioned, lots of portfolio advice on the web page and we'll be sending you a portfolio advice email, which will uh, link you through. We have a YouTube playlist, which includes specific information for postgraduate applications and portfolios, and also about Pebblepad, which is the platform we use for our digital portfolios. You can always look at the course web page, which has an overview of the course after today. And also if you'd like to come and visit us at Camberwell and have a look around, we do run monthly campus tours led by a student ambassador, but we'll also be setting up some dates in the new year for on-site postgraduate open days. So if you'd like to come along to one of those, those will be much more in depth. You'll get to meet course team, current students, have a look at studios, facilities. So that will be uh, coming up in the new year as well. And then finally, the discovery webinars. 
Uh, we are running a whole host of discovery webinars that cover things like UAL accommodation services. So if you're thinking about accommodation whilst you study, um, you can join one of those. And we're also doing some postgraduate application and portfolio advice webinars as well. And again, I'll link to those in the follow up email for you. OK, that's more than enough for me. So thank you very much for listening. I'm now going to hand over to Owen, who's going to share a little bit about his experience on the course. OK, over to you, Owen. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Uh, hello, my name's Owen. I am, as you said, a MA uh, sculpture student here at Camberwell. I'm in my <laughs> first unit. I'm also in quite a loud library. One second. So let me um, share my screen with you and show you what I've been up to. So, um, for me, first thing that you do when you arrive at Camberwell is that you you start with a research proposition that probably starts, you know, as you make your application. It's something that you continue to work with uh, through your time at Camberwell, and it can it can change and morph a bit. Um, so I started with the research proposition. Um, for some people, what they want to do is extremely clear, especially coming from a non-art background and you even want to get into the arts, that's a really good way to bring those two things together. Um, or if you have a specific interest in the arts, already in the arts that you want to take further. Um, uh, I'll come back to that in a bit. I'm going to talk about um, what I've done in term one now, which is about really getting back to basics, uh, getting orientated the different workshops we have at Campbell uh, and some of the making processes uh, that are available. So on the sculpture floor, which is split between BA and MA, we have our own dedicated workshops, um, which we basically don't have to share. <laughs> and so we have a really good metal workshop for, you know, hot processes, We've got, a, you know, welding and bending and heating and things and uh, we also create uh, ability to work with cold metal i'll show you that in a bit uh, molding and casting uh, uh, specialist workshop with another wax room in it so that's your, your clays and plasters uh, positives and negatives um, there's supposed to be a forge there and that's supposed to be up and running again in the new year there's some issues with the uh, gas, but that is still available for uh, use at Chelsea and uh, Camberwell is in a partnership with Chelsea, Camberwell and Wimbledon, so it's it's not that hard to get over there, you know, in the meantime. We have our own dedicated 3D printers, which I've made use of uh, for making positives for casting, and uh, all the MAs and BAs have dedicated uh, studio space, pretty sizable uh, skylight, nice. So cold metal workshop. Uh, been taken through the various processes uh, again uh, from first principles in a way. Here's a day I spent with some cold metals, I learned how to solder, which I hadn't done before, uh, made a 3D shape, and we really encouraged to play with materials. So it looked a little like uh, a, a teardrop or, or a balloon. I ended up making it, definitely making a blimp here. And soldering in three dimensions was like a cool thing to learn. I've seen some hole punch stuff around here as well, all different processes just going on and cutting some scrap metal. There's loads of scrap, scrap metal around. Uh, how to go at welding. I'm a terrible welder, but it's, it's good to learn new things and practice makes perfect. Um, did a casting workshop again with our, uh, you know, uh, dedicated one day a week and here all the time, sculpture technician Sarah. Uh, this is plaster in a balloon that I, I painted up to look like a bin bag uh, in Southwark. We are in Southwark, so there we are, one of those. Uh, and slip castings. Now, slip casting I went in really hard on because we have this uh, casting and, and moulding workshop next to us for, you know, silicon as well as these things. But we also have specialist um, Camberwell Y facilities. So I made this mould and sculpture and then I, I borrowed slip um from downstairs and that's a really uh, amazing technical process um probably won't be coming back to it because it's very time intensive but you'll see some pictures of what it can do in a minute so 
Camberwell facilities, you're welcome to go cross pathway. I've just come off a, a cross pathway trip with computational arts, uh, which is one of the MA courses. I've maybe not listed here, comes under digital media. We have ceramics, printmaking, photography, great woodwork place, uh, and a library. It's a good library. I will just leave it at that. You can come see it for yourself. In our studios, we can get in there six days a week. We have technical help five days a week, 3D printing five days a week, casting technician five days a week. Uh, we have a great tutor in Matt, and we have uh, the rest of the VA faculty, Leah Capaldi, uh, Tina, uh, and some some of us I'm glad I haven't met, but I say Leah because I met her on my BA. And we also have cross pathway faculty with other experience you're welcome to uh, talk to. So Sarah Woodfine, who runs MA Drawing, used to run BA Wimbledon at Camberwell, uh, at Wimbledon, and now she's here. So, you know, it's great to be cited in subject, but you can also, you know, use that as a place to move beyond. So studio experiments, um, my initial proposal, research proposal was about monuments in public, monuments, it's always thinking about public space, uh, power, permission, authority. Took a trip to the British Museum, like the totems, made some totem, uh, don't know. And then I really started to think about this, the symbology. So here's uh, a, a brick wrapped in the flag, um, kind of a tatty sense of protection and repair, quite an antagonistic object, um, but, you know, kind of safe in an art, disarmed in an art context as well. So some really, you know, interesting things started to come through for me. Uh, here it is in a situation, some kind of uh, we're encouraged to sort of set things up and see how they work. So here's a quick a kind of sketch of, of one sort of resolution for that, or one thing you know you could do in a gallery context. This is just in the in the corner of the MA studio. Mm. Um, now I said I would return to slip casting. I was slip casting bricks, and this is to kind of deprive them of their use and make them hollow and be able to smash them in a way that you shouldn't be able to do. Actually, material started to do things then too, and it was when it's wet. I was able to twist it and then, you know, fire it twisted. Uh, it just really opens opens up a lot of material possibilities. And uh, another one that I didn't twist, uh, I glazed. So now it's this kind of hyper real, kind of gloopy thing. Um, and then there's this idea of like celebration as well. So then this is a 3D, this is a 3D print here that I made to, to make the positive, to make the mold, to make the cast. But um, since I had that residue, I, I cut through it and put evaporated milk and, and, and sprinkles on it. And it's given this really interesting, like inedible uh, it's kind of symbol that I'm, that I'm kind of curious about. Um, I'm not sure how long I've been going on, so just to run you through the last thing, uh, this is my last script with Comparts. Uh, that was it was literally yesterday, uh, and now I um, I want to say something about the research proposition. Yeah, I I used it as a starting point, but actually I have been reflecting on it a lot, and I've decided to think of it as much more of a proposal form, and that's something that can take. Some artists like Peter Liversidge, um, John Latham Artist Placement Group, and, and people like that, the way that it can, like, you can use a proposal to kind of motivate you to, to go forward. So I've changed it into that. And um, as my thinking has kind of expanded now beyond the studio, I've also started to work with um, back into installation, a kind of expanded, exploded kind of views of things. So this is yesterday. Still got these references to the to the to the monument and celebration with the streamers and the Guinness, but it's starting to get a lot more uh, experimental. And uh, thankfully, uh, there's a long way to go, and it will be, you know, there'll be a graduate show in June. Uh, in fact, I think I have a slide that explains this. Yeah, artist research point of departure, language of official din. Lots of opportunities left to show. In fact, I've only had a. I've had a lot, but there's a lot more ambitious ones coming. So we put an application in for the uh, gallery space down here. 
for uh, spring. We have an external show as well in unit two. We have a graduate show when you would expect in the summer. And then we stay on the course until um, December 2024 and we present other ways of making as, as research. Uh, this year's research festival, uh, you know, and it's public and expanded. And this year's festival was held at APT Gallery in Deptford, which is a, a great venue. And I have other shows sort of ticking along um, around the country on the side. Um, I think that's the end. Uh, any questions in the chat? I'll get to them later. Okay. Thanks. Abs. Thanks so much, Erin. Matt, we'll hand over to you. Thanks so much, Owen. That was great. It was really nice to see that work in sequence, actually. Um, right, so let me just share my screen. So my name is Matthew de Kerr St. Girodeau. Uh, I'm the Sculpture Pathway Leader, MA Fine Art Sculpture Pathway Leader. My email's there if anyone wants to get in touch with me individually. Um, but of course, you have um, uh, a re recruitment contacts that you can get in touch with about that process as well. So I'm going to talk for about 15 minutes about the course. I'm just going to introduce the course ethos, the kind of things that we look to teach students and the way that we hope to teach them. So the Sculpture MA aims to equip emerging artists with the skills and tools to develop a professional practice. Uh, we seek to encourage experimental approaches to making and thinking about contemporary sculpture, but in an expanded form. So thinking about spatial practices and audience. As Owen alluded to in his presentation before, there's a focus on practice as research. So making art as a form of research, of discovering knowledge. I suppose that the really specific thing about the MA Fine Art and Sculpture is that it is a sculpture course and there's not many of those in London. Campbell has this history of um, subject specific uh, courses and there's something really important about that. And that's, that's something that I really focus on in terms of the, the sessions that I try to deliver. I'm really interested in what sculpture is, what it might be for you when you're studying with us. So we look a lot at contemporary sculptural practice. We encourage really diverse approaches to sculpture. Um, yeah, this notion of the expanded field of sculpture is really, is really present in the kind of work that students end up making. As Owen mentioned, there's amazing workshops available. So we have dedicated sculpture workshops. We have dedicated sculpture technicians. We have lots of tools and materials on site um, upstairs on the fifth floor where we're based. And then of course you have these amazing workshops all around the campus. So ceramics, digital fabrication, the 3D workshops, uh, print photography. Some of our students have just done etching and screen printing. So yeah, as Owen mentioned, you can cross over and use these other workshops that are connected to those other pathways. We're very much integrated within the MA Fine Art as a whole. You have dedicated studio space. Yeah, you can access it six days a week into the evening as well. And there is space for projects to happen. We have Camberwell, uh, the Camberwell project space downstairs on the ground floor. And that there is there are kind of open application processes for students to use that. We have an amazing, um, amazing schedule of professional practice lectures and seminars with visiting artists and specialists doing everything from really practical workshops on, you know, how to read an academic text or how to write an artist statement to really creative workshops. We had Rebecca Moss in recently and took all the sculpture students out to perform in public space and document their work through video and photography. Um, and yeah, this expanded notion of sculpture incorporates ideas of digital making as well. So um, uh, it's not just about traditional making, but it's about digital making as well. So the things that we're really interested in passing over to you when you come and study sculpture with us is the notion of a creative practice. It's a practice based study. Uh, is research through practice. So what does that mean? It means it's all about making, it's all about working with materials, and it's all about discovering things and discovering new knowledge through an expanded range of activities that includes writing, as you would expect on an academic 
um, MA, but also, of course, making, working with your hands, this kind of haptic knowledge you get through handling materials, learning new skills, and understanding processes. Critical thinking is really important. That to me is how we learn as artists. That's how we drive our practice forward is by making, then reflecting on what we've made in relation to what other people have made, what other artists have made. But of course, that kind of wider creative practice of, 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 of contemporary art, but then, you know, bringing in, I don't know, art historians or philosophers or other thinkers to, to make sense of our practice. There's lots of moments of collaboration, whether that's simply things like group critiques in which peer, where peer learning happens, where we look at the work of a student and then all the other students offer feedback and everyone learns through discussion, or whether that's more formal collaboration um, through group workshops or through pop-up exhibitions or through other moments where you come together to work with other students. And then finally, professional autonomy. What fine artists are really good at is managing and delivering their own projects. And that's something that we're really keen to pass over to students as part of professional practice. It's what you'll need to kind of operate as an artist in the world, but also as a key component of creative practice. Um, I just wanted to include something about employability because that's becoming more and more important. Why people study is more and more about making sure that they have a secure and interesting career ahead of them. And these statistics we got from the Institute for the Future, by 2030, we know that 30% of the workforce will be Gen Z. However, 85% of jobs that, that will exist in 2030 haven't been invented yet. So there's no way to train directly for the jobs of the future, right? So what kind of career skills do our graduates need? Well, the World Economic Forum identified the four most important graduate skills, creativity, problem solving, leadership and social influence, and critical thinking. And these match almost exactly onto the learning outcomes that we aim for with all our teaching. So we have three units in the course, unit one, unit two, unit three, and they all are marked in relation to process, realization, knowledge and communication, and inquiry. And these really map onto those skills that, that people are gonna need to work um, in the future. As I said, it's three units over 15 months. That 15 month structure is quite unique to uh, MAs at Camberwell, Chelsea and Wimbledon. And it means that there's more opportunities for public exhibition of your work and public presentation of your research. There is lots of opportunities for self-initiated projects. There's also MA Fine Art course-wide exhibitions and this research festival right at the end of the course where we think about different ways of presenting work. So we encourage students to think about creating a publication or writing a piece, you know, writing a text or performing or, you know, designing a workshop, that kind of thing. Um, the BA and the MA sculpture department are very close. We work together on a few projects. One of them is the Hannah Pesher Sculpture Award, which is based at the Hannah Pesher Sculpture Garden, where a group of BA and MA students will work together to produce projects, um, sorry, a, a outdoor sculpture, outdoor sculptures for public display in the Hannah Pesha Sculpture Garden. So that's a really exciting external project. So these are the units. I'm not gonna go into incredible detail on these. These are all available to look at online. But unit one is really about locating your practice within the subject specialism, so within sculpture, understanding sculpture in relation to your own work and thinking about how that, you know, that relation might drive the development of your practice. Unit two, is testing beyond subject. So it's about experimentation, it's about development, it's about pushing things forward. Unit two is where we will have a bigger public exhibition. Unit one, there's a smaller pop-up exhibition that's just about to happen in the studios right now. And finally, unit three, there'll be two opportunities within unit three to make your work public through the summer show, which happens at the same time as the BA exhibitions in Camberwell, in the Camberwell building, and then the research festival that happens in the autumn term at an external venue. This year is APT Gallery, a really well-respected and well-known um, artist studios and galleries in Deptford. Uh, we haven't set the location for next year's festival yet. So these are, these are all the learning and teaching methods that we use. Some of these are, 
are pretty obvious. So getting artists to come in and speak about their practice is really important. Some of these might not be familiar to you if you haven't studied fine art before. The idea of a group crit is really important. This, this moment of peer discussion and peer learning and feeding back to students about their work is really central to the way we learn. And we, we introduce that and we talk about different models for the group crit. And over the 15 months together, we'll have multiple opportunities to implement different kinds of group crit. There's lots and lots of independent practice. You have the access to the workshops. You have the access to the studios. Um, there's opportunities for knowledge exchange with external agencies. We have lots of external partners and we work them on, with them on various projects with our students. There's lectures, people coming in to speak about what they do <clears throat> or how to do things. There's external exhibitions and internal exhibitions. There's the professional toolkit lectures, which takes on that professional practice aspect of how to write an artist statement, how to update your CV, how to create a website, that kind of thing. Reading groups, seminars, one-to-one uh, -one tutorials, lots of one-to-one -one tutorials with me and with other members of staff, which I'll talk about in a bit. And of course, all the workshops, you're inducted into those workshops as and when you need them. So studio-based practice, a bit of Owen's work there. And there's Chuamo, who's working away with some plaster in the studio. You have that location. It becomes a kind of hub for your practice. You might go out into the world, do research, work with other people. But ultimately, we're coming back to the studio to discuss ideas, to test things out and to, you know, create work. Uh, this is in deep, deepest, darkest winter last year, I think. So people are making, people are putting work up to show other people and to take photos, to document. People are trying out new processes. You know, they're experimenting, seeing what works for them. We have this amazing subject area, technical support and teaching. Um, Hannah, I'm just aware that I'm probably going over time. So you are welcome to kind of step in when you. No, when you you're all good. Carry okay. on. All right. We have this amazing subject area technical support in the form of Sarah Byers. We have Blythe as well, who works um, more generally with BA and MA. But Sarah has a morning every week dedicated to doing a workshop. This is a textiles workshop she ran with students this year, but also getting to know the students individually and helping them start thinking about how what kind of technical support, what kind of skills and process that processes they might need to understand in order to realize their their projects more successfully. So Sarah's always around. She's always happy to have a chat. And then she has this dedicated time with us on a Wednesday morning. We have this guided workshop support. This is Shang Tao's work from last year. She ended up using the foundry at Chelsea um, to make a bronze cast, which is a very involved process. And it work, it involves, sorry, it's a very involved process and it involves kind of working closely one-to-one -one with the technician who is Lindsay who's really amazing. I think she's actually worked with Owen on some of his casting stuff. Um, I won't go through the process now, but it's a multi-stage process, which led to this kind of patinaed bronze sculpture that was mounted on a wall with wax flowers that you can't can't see here. But that was a really successful project and was really um, gratifying for the student Chantal to be able to learn that process and incorporate it into her work. Group critique. So this notion of sharing work in progress, they're always guided by a tutor, um, although there are opportunities for student led groups as well. And it's really about learning through peer discussion. They're really central that, you know, ev everyone at British Art School is kind of familiar with this. But for some international students, it's a really different way to learn. And I'm really excited for people when they first get involved in group critiques. I'm really keen for people to learn how to get the best out of them and to make sure it, it serves them as well and serves their needs as artists. Tutorials these one-on-one -on -one moments with me and with other tutors. We have individual guidance. We have real time for in-depth discussion. It's really, it's a small course. At the moment we have 10 students. Last year we had 15. It's going to be around that size again. So it really means there's really time for me to get to know your individual practices and for other tutors to get to know what you do and what you want to do. There's always moments of checking in and receiving and you getting feedback on your work. This is Yushi's work from last year, a really successful um, student. And then lots of research, reading and discussion in the form of seminars, reading groups, group discussions, uh, and, and, and these kind of critical moments of reflection on sculpture, on what it is to be an artist, on what creative practice is. So this is from a seminar that we had yesterday on, I guess, ritual and sculpture was the, was the theme. 
Uh, we watched some film clips and we also read a text together by Linda Good Bryant called Contextures. So I don't just give you text and then let you kind of try and work out what was said in it. We read together, we discuss together, we make sense of things together. So we're kind of all working through the same material alongside your individual research. Do lots of exhibition visits. Uh, this is the V&A cast room. We went to see Lagos Peck and Repeat at, um, at South London Gallery. Um, this is Magdalena Abakanovic at Tate Modern. This is last year. And Maria Bartosova at Tate Modern. There are lots of external exhibition opportunities. This is a few years ago. This is the Saatchi Gallery, London grads now. This included MA Sculpture graduates. Last year, we did a lovely little exhibition called Forces of the Small at Philae Gallery. So this was uh, where students created tiny miniature ex um, works for exhibition. Last year, we ha also had a barge at the Barge House, which is in central London, an external exhibition of MA work across the pathways. So it was mixed groups of students from across the different pathways. And then you can also create pop-up exhibitions. As students, there's a gallery you can book out called A to B Gallery. Here we go. Here's one that happened recently that was led by an MA sculpture student called Carmen. And this gallery is available for students to use. You know, they just have to book it through me or another member of staff and they can put on group exhibitions or even just book it out as a kind of project space to test out ideas. So we have these studio based workshops um, where people come in to deliver workshops. So like Sarah Byers delivered that textile workshop. Uh, Jeanette Thomas ran an animation workshop for us last year. Uh, Eleanor Crook led this anatomy workshop, thinking about figurative sculpture. And here, here's a, a picture of some of the workshops at Peckham Road. So the wood workshop, the metal workshop, printmaking here as well. We're really interested in how you work in your pathway, you know, in sculpture, reflecting on what sculpture is, and then expand beyond it as well. So here's some work made in ceramics, some metal work, foundry work. Um, the way we assess your work is through those moments of exhibition, those moments where you put work up that's kind of finished and you're, you're, you think it's the most successful stuff. We make sure we, we're always there for that. And we always have formative assessment in terms of crits whenever you have an exhibition. So there's moments where we all go around and really look at the work. Then you create something called an online reflective platform that often takes the form of a website, but it can be any kind of online platform that you choose. And then there's lots of moments. Well, there's these kind of specific moments where you present verbally and, you know, describe your process, describe what you've learned and describe the work you've made. So there are these multiple ways in which we assess your work so that you have opportunities to articulate yourself through your work publicly through this online reflective platform and in person, you know, kind of through speaking. This is the core teaching team of the MA Fine Art. So Sarah Woodfine runs MA Drawing, Geraint Evans runs MA Painting, Joe Love runs MA Printmaking, I run Sculpture, and Max Dovey runs Computational Arts. Um, on the Sculpture team, we have a variety of visiting lectures. lecturers. Yu Chen Wang is often involved with MA Sculpture. Olivia Bax will be involved uh, from the spring term. She's so busy with exhibitions at the moment, she hasn't been in this term, but she's a really important member of the team. Kira Fries, Jeanette Thomas also work with us. Rebecca Moss has already been in this year. I'm hoping to get her back in next year. Sarah, occasionally do, we do kind of things across drawing and um, sculpture. And Leah Capaldi, another kind of essential member of the MA Sculpture team. Sean has been in recently for a kind of visiting lecture. So I'll just click through a few images of students' work. This is, you know, not, there's only a tiny sample of what people make. People make interactive work, wearable sculpture. Um, people make more uh, traditional forms of sculpture. This is kind of wall-based textile piece by Sian Chanda. This is ceramic work, beautiful ceramic work, I think. This is Mel Wu's. You know, this is using lots of different processes and thinking about sculpture as a kind of assemblage. Mel Wu here as well, thinking about weaving as textiles, but then displaying it on the floor. Laura Porter, quite innovative use of metal work covered in a recycled textiles, a process that she kind of developed herself actually over her time on the MA. She's running a gallery now and has shown lots after leaving the MA.
There's another detail. Long Yuan incorporating drawing and installation into sculptural practice. Uh, so these are images from that Saatchi Gallery show, London Grads. Now, this is from when we had a show at the South London Gallery as well. We have lots of opportunities for industry engagement. So engaging with, you know, creative arts practitioners and the wider kind of creative arts through talks, workshops, networking events, opportunities. Actually, lots of them coming through that postgrad community um, organisation that Hannah was mentioning right at the start and these external shows. So moments where we ask external curators to work with students or come in and speak to students and reflect on their work. What we're we looking for, I'm just really repeating what Hannah said here, and you you know you can get the details um, from from that presentation. We ask for a personal statement, and we ask for a portfolio, and then we also ask for a short video from you talking about your practice, talking about your interests, and that's really just to get to know who you are and what you're about, what you're interested in. Okay, well that's everything from me. Um, we have time for questions at the end, as Hannah said.